All right, welcome. I see people starting to, to join us. We'll wait for a couple of minutes um, and, and we'll be ready for you. My name is Olevi Soto. I'm the director of admissions here at Harvard Divinity School. And we're, we're eager to, to hear from you and, and to have an opportunity to hear from, uh, from our current students to share their thoughts and, and their wisdom on how and why they chose the Master of Theological Studies. So stay with us. We'll be with you in about 30 more seconds and we'll get going. Here's a chance for one last sip of water, one last stretch, and we'll be with you. All right, well, this sounds like uh, it's about 30 seconds since we, I last mentioned this. Again, welcome to those of you who just trickled in. My name is Olevi Soto. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Harvard Divinity School, and welcome, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm a proud alum of the HCS uh, community. I, I received my Master of Divinity back in 2011, and it's been a real honor and privilege to come back and have an opportunity to to meet new prospective students and eventually to have them apply and join us in our community. We're very excited. We have um, a very straightforward, hopefully very informative event for you today. We're going to talk um, about the program uh, first in general, HES, just sort of I'll, I'll chat with you for about 10 minutes or so, uh, give you some hopefully nuts and bolts uh, details that will help you as you're thinking whether to apply now or the following cycle. And then we'll transition to having our wonderful panelists and, and having um, that four students that are going to have it be in conversation with Professor David Lambert. So I'll get started right now. So again, this is me. Uh, hello again. All right. So quick, quick couple things that we're hoping you walk away with uh, when you're thinking about Harvard Divinity School, because we know these sort of institutions whether it's the graduate school or the university writ large, uh, have a lot of history in, and in that process, a lot of myth that, that can be attached to it. So there are a couple of things that we want to make sure that you walk away knowing about Harvard Divinity School. We've been around since 1816. Uh, we were the first Divinity School um, in the U.S., and we're also very proud to be the most religiously pluralistic in the world. That's something we take uh, a lot of pride in and something that really informs our community spirit, but also the sort of questions and the sort of the answers that we're looking for as we build a more just and peaceful world. Uh, HES educates students for a whole host of things. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about what some of our current students are preparing themselves for. You'll hear, of course, yeah. academic careers, or you might hear about um, social and, and uh, justice work, uh, religious literacy, political work, economic opportunities, uh, working in the foreign service, you name it. So you'll hear about how our, our students are able to be capacious in their understanding of some of the topics we, we learn here and then carry them on into all sorts of different arenas. And again, our vision is, is, is quite large and, and hopefully ambitious enough to accommodate a lot of other people's ambitions and, and visions, which is to provide an intellectual home uh, in which we can learn about different religions and effort to, of course, create a more just world at peace. That's our vision. Again, the MTS is what we're honing in on today. A couple of things uh, for you to, to be aware of. Uh, again, it's a, it's a full-time degree, two years. Uh, you'll, you, we can talk more about the areas of focus and, and the 19 options that we have on, on that, um, but also the fact that we encourage you to become an expert in other areas as well. We we want you to really uh, be conversant in uh, various traditions, but also different modes of understanding some of these big questions. There's one required class, uh, which in fact you share with uh, your peers and the other degree programs, and there's a language requirement. What this means is that there's a lot of freedom, a lot of intellectual freedom in, in how you can structure two years here, but also it's safe to say that no two HES students' transcripts look alike. You're really able to tailor your questions uh, and what you're looking for it through not only the curriculum here at Divinity School, but the whole university. And one massive thing for you to, to know uh, about our MTS program 
is that institutional grant aid is available. In fact, about 90% of our MTS students, just like in the other programs, receive financial aid. And it's quite generous as well. We can talk more about that here or in other, in other webinars or in other opportunities as you communicate with the admissions office. Again, these are the aforementioned 19 areas of focus. Um, uh, we're very excited about our new religions of the ancient Mediterranean uh, area of focus. You'll see that the, the, the areas run the gamut, uh, but there's a lot of overlap in some of these as well. And in fact, some students realizing they're looking for a particular slice of some of these questions are able to also create sometimes their own independent areas of focus as well. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of options for, for students. Um, I, I know that I took a lot of, when I was a student, I took a lot of courses in, in, in South Asian religious traditions, Jewish studies and, and Buddhist studies, for example. So those are some of the ones that I remember really gravitating towards. Again, institutional grant, something that and I'm really hoping you walk away with knowing that if this is something that you're you're interested in, financial aid should, should not be a deterrent. In fact, it should be something you're really excited about. Uh, we are one of only two divinity schools in the country that that knew that do need based aid, which means that uh, our application process, the admissions committee, uh, is completely need blind. We have no idea what students. Uh, financial aid situation or their needs are. So we want to admit students uh, on the merits of, of, of what they bring to the community. And uh, that means that actually the great majority of our funding is based on the need-based model. If, if you are a needy, we want to make sure you can, you can join us. Um, you'll see that there are three levels of need-based aid. The lowest one starts at 75% of your tuition grants. The great majority of students have the full tuition grant. And actually, uh, a lot of students also qualify for the full tuition grant and a living uh, expense stipend as well. Again, just on the need-based aid. There's a smaller percentage of aid allotted for merit aid base. And you'll see that it's uh, just considered by the admissions committee. And it's usually a full uh, tuition grant and a stipend between 12,000 and 20,000. These numbers, just to help you contextualize them, are, are quite generous. And in fact, some of these numbers can only be found in, in doctoral programs. So we're, we're very glad that we can provide this sort of aid at the master's level uh, for a lot of our students as well. Again, this is the nuts and bolts part that I mentioned that I, uh, that I would talk about. The application is very straightforward. Um, we we want to know a little bit more about your story in terms of your interests. Um, we your statement of purpose is really really integral here. Um, and there are three main questions we we hope that you answer in that process. We want it to be a reflective opportunity for you, but we we will hope that you can answer three main things. So why you? So why you the applicant? Why us? Why Harvard Divinity School as an institution in which you want to engage with? And, and why now? Um, why are you applying now? Why not last year? Why not three years from now? Why is the timing perfect for you right now? So that's something that we hope helps you think through uh, how you want to present yourself in the statement of purpose. A resume, of course, we want to know how you've been spending your time, how you've been giving of yourself, um, uh, really sort of increasing your capacity in different, different areas. So that's something that uh, we want to know more about. Of course, we want to know how you've done academically. We'll need your transcripts. Um, this is graduate school, and this is uh, a quite challenging uh, graduate school. Very engaging, but there's a lot of reading and writing. And we want to make sure that you can uh, hit the ground running and, and, and really make the most of it. Let us a recommendation. We require three. Uh, the Master of Theological Studies, a lot of our, uh, our, our applicants really emphasize professors and, and at this stage, people who can really attest uh, to the student's ability to not only engage with this material, but be able to produce, again, through through strong writing uh, at the graduate level work. So I would, I would encourage you to think about how your recommenders can also highlight different strengths of yours as well, since we asked you for three. Our writing sample, I told you we were writing heavy. Uh, we want to know how, how you've done. Uh, and, and of course, you can um, 
create a new writing sample, a new something you produce uh, just for the, the application, or you can actually take something, uh, an excerpt from a bigger piece and contextualize it and then present to us um, with that within the, the, the parameters we set, which is about uh, five to seven pages, just again, a sense of, of your writing style um, and your citation. Do, do you know how to manipulate this sort of this sort of back and forth sort of writing intensive work? Um, if applicable, if you have not done your undergraduate level work in an English only institution, uh, we would ask you to uh, send us your TOEFL and IELTS scores. And then the last part is an interview by invitation. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit more, but honestly for you to also uh, get to know us more. It's an opportunity um, to see how we could be a good fit for you. You know, uh, are the are the areas of interest that you're looking for, whether area of focus or the student groups or uh, the sort of community feel, are we going to be able to provide you with what you're looking for as a student? So it's an opportunity for for us to ask you some follow-up questions, but for you to also ask us some follow-up questions. We've had the application open for just about mm -hmm. under a month. Uh, you'll see that we will close right after New Year's Day. And then uh, we're gonna ask you to, we encourage you to do so, to, to submit your financial aid application. Mm -hmm. Those are usually um, available, um, the, the application is available late January or early February. And that's around the same time in which we also invite you for these 15 minute interviews. And then before you know it, it's mid March and that's when we release decisions. And then we have about a month to, to answer all your questions. Uh, hopefully have you join us for open house, connect for professors like Professor David Lambert and others who were able to answer all your questions as you're trying to discern between different schools. So that's, that's the application, that is the timeline. And then uh, again, we have a lot of wonderful stuff that we hope you you avail yourselves of, whether it's uh, the blog, whether it's all our social media presence, uh, whether it's our YouTube playlist through HGS admissions in which we, we have events like these that are, are hopefully very helpful to you. And of course you can just email us. Uh, we can, we can, we're happy to answer any questions in the admissions office or our current students or graduate assistants can also uh, give you their perspective as as current students. Okay, all right. So this is when I I take my leave. I am again privileged to be able to to introduce Professor of Philosophy and Theology, uh, the Chairman of the Master of Theological Studies Program, Professor David Lambert. Thank you so much for for joining us, Professor Lambert. Thank you. It is it's great to uh, to be with everyone uh, today for this event, uh, and I'm delighted uh, to be able to conduct a conversation um, among a really wonderful group of uh, MTS students today. So as better to inform you about thinking about the degree, um, as uh, mentioned, I'm a professor of philosophy and theology here. I teach in modern. Western uh, religious traditions predominantly, um, philosophical reflections, uh, treatments in, in secular studies, in uh, Christianity and uh, Judaism in particular, and uh, focusing both on the European context and also in North America. Um, many of my, I, I am here today representing my colleagues on the faculty who range really, it, widely, both in terms of preparation uh, and expertise all the way around the globe and really all the way around the university in terms of the kind of interdisciplinary preparation we have. And our student body typically has a range of uh, such interests and expertises as well. So by way of starting today, um, I think what I'll do is ask uh, the students to introduce themselves briefly, maybe tell you what their interests are in and uh, what they're doing here while they're at HDS. And perhaps, uh, Keisha, I'll start with you. And then as, after you're done introducing yourself, maybe you can hand it to one of the other students. Awesome. Thank you so much, Professor Lambert. Um, my name is Keisha Bush. I am MTS. Um, I'm a second year. My, my focus is religion, literature, and culture. 
Um, and I mean, I love HDS. It feels like Candyland to me, or it, it is Candyland for me. Um, just the classes and community. I um, am a novelist. And so what brought me, drew me to HDS was the ability um, to do reading, um, the kind of reading that I need as I work on um, a new novel. And these, I was looking, I was looking for the books, but didn't know which books I needed. And then I take classes and it's all the books that I need. Um, so yeah. Um, and I can pass it to Maria. Thank you, Keisha, and thank you, Professor Lambert. My name is Maria. I'm a second year master's in theological studies, and I study religion, ethics, and politics. I agree with Keisha that this is like Candyland, but I also think of it as home, like coming here. I was a part of DivX in 2021, so coming here for the first time during the Diversity Explorers program that HDS offers, I really wanted to see what it felt like for me being so far from home. Um, I grew up in Indiana and it did feel like home. And now living here um, for the past year uh, and so, I have worked to build a community um, and I have, met amazing people like Keisha and Rob and Rajiv. Um, yeah, so I have really enjoyed my time and I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll pass it to Rajiv. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you, Professor and uh, Odevis as well. Um, yeah, I'm Rajiv. I'm second year MTS uh, focusing on Hindu studies. Um, I'm from Toronto, um, and I, um, I love, I, love, I mean, everyone's going to say that they love this school, but everyone really loves this school, so, um, this school is great, this school is, uh, a friend of mine who's in the college, uh, a, like a column for the Crimson, the Harvard newspaper, every weekend, he wrote something about this school, how it's like this hidden kind of like Harvard's best kept secret, because it's this place where like, it's, everybody's accepted and like the kind of dialogue that happens there is unparalleled and um, I'm super grateful that I made the decision to come here over you know other kind of options that I had and um, I'm comfortable here I'm happy here and I'm also challenged here which is which is huge um, but yeah um, I'll last but not least I'll hand it over to to Rob who's also my classmate yeah thank you very much I, I appreciate uh, Professor Lamberth and Odeviz uh, I am, I believe, the oldest member of our class. I'm not the only member of AARP, but I think I am the oldest member of AARP in our class. Uh, I, this to me is candy land times two, because at this age, I'm 64, just to be back in school again is just a blast. It's incredible fun. I have a son who's a senior in college. And there are times that he calls me and, and I say to him what he used to say to me, I can't talk now. I have too much schoolwork I have to do. Uh, there are an amazing array of classes offered here. You will, if you love intellectual study, you will just salivate when you see the next semester's potential course list and you just rue the fact that you can't take all the things that you really want to take. Um, it is a beautiful campus. I'm sitting on the backside of Swartz Hall. There are wild turkeys wandering over on the field over here. And yet it's five, 10 minute walk to get to Harvard Yard. And I take classes at Harvard Divinity. I've taken classes at the law school. I've taken classes with undergrads. And it's a very easy commute around all these places. And uh, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you all. Uh, uh, really great to have you all here. So let me start off uh, just to just to dive in a little bit more with each of you um, and ask perhaps uh, Rajiv and Maria to elaborate a bit on the, 
personal and professional goals that brought you to HTS? Um, Maria, maybe we'll start with you. Yeah, thank you. So coming into divinity school, I was questioning different aspects of my faith. I wanted to have a space where I could be surrounded by different traditions and wholly ask questions about my faith to see if I really believed it. If this is a path, like, where is this coming from? Because my eventual, eventually I would like to go to law school and I don't feel like I could go to law school without being confident in my own belief system. And while I've been here, I have been able to answer those questions that I had that I really didn't think would, could, could even be possible in answering. Um, and it's been a very, um, like in many ways, like healing journey for myself and, and being able to answer these questions. Um, I recently made the decision to take another year to apply um, to law school. And that's because I feel like also being here at the Divinity School, I've also leaned into why I do the things that I do, my intentions, like where is this coming from? And I've learned to take my time and that is okay. And to be patient with the process. And I'm just have like a different perspective on how I approach um, my different, my next professional um, goal, even though it's the same, but from a different lens. So yeah, Rajiv? Yeah, um, this school is kind of at the nexus or at the intersection of uh, so many things for me. And the more time I spend here, the more I realize why it's important for me to be here and like how necessary it is for me to be here for things I didn't think about before coming. Um, but uh, personal goals and professional goals, personal goals, I'm a devout Hindu. Um, and I think, you know, part of being devout in any kind of tradition is being able to uh, be self-critical as well. And I think looking for certain blind spots you have in faith and that, you know, your faith community may have, uh, you start to ask, how do I answer these questions? How do I fill these gaps? And I, I thought that, you know, the academic kind of side of this is crucial to kind of better answer those questions and get a hard, uh, you know, objective kind of understanding of how certain things work. And so I came uh, partially to solve those problems personally. Um, but also because I'm, a, I'm, you know, devout, it was also a great, uh, gap between I also want to apply to law schools and it was a great gap between college and um, law school um, not just to kind of figure things out but also to ensure that you know I had an ethically grounded kind of approach to whatever career I wanted to approach and um, like Maria said as well like also being firm in what I believe and what kind of uh, ideas form my value system before you go into such a fraught kind of a feel. But the more, again, the more I spend here, the more I realize how many more reasons there are for me to have been here. Um, Rob and Keisha, maybe, maybe if I can ask each of you, it's been only a short year and some change, but I, but I wonder how you uh, reflect on how you've changed already since you've been at Harvard Divinity School in the MTS program. Rob, Keisha, maybe I'll with you. have you start okay. or Keisha? Yeah, sure. Rob, go ahead. We'll come uh, to Keisha. Well, I think the, the change, yes, you can still change at my age. <laughs> that's, that's a nice start. Uh, what I really love about this place, what first attracted me to it, was that it is so pluralistic. There are people of all faith traditions, and there are people here, I'm sure, atheists and agnostic and all sorts of variations. And it's a requirement to be tolerant and to listen and to I should say it's a, literally a requirement. It's just kind of a moral calling to do so. And 
I think in the world at large, uh, hate and anger are no longer considered vices, and yet here they are. And so people still talk, people and reflect their cultural background and they're treated with respect. And I think that that's essential. I can be a snarky person. No, really? Uh, <laughs> and one of my teachers actually said the other day, uh, uh, in fact, the class I take with both Maria and Rajiv, Someone asked him about like, how critical can I be when I'm analyzing this text? And he said, I don't mind you being critical at all. I just don't want you to be dismissive. And I just love that. I ran home and told my wife that because I think in my own past, I've tended to probably sound more sarcastic and dismissive than I would have liked. And so it gives me a chance to really reflect on how to relate a disagreement in a productive way. Keisha. That's really, that's amazing, Rob. Um, I also, um, I know it's been a short, like a year is considered not a long time. Um, but I find, I have found that between the rigor, um, the depth of my classes, um, the open heartedness of like many of my professors who are, you know, teachers and advisors and mentors. Um, I, you know, I, I've done a lot of healing while I'm here. We, you know, when I came to HDS last September, I had been um, on lockdown for over 18 months or almost two years um, and was very isolated because I left New York and moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma and realized that 18 months of isolation is actually not healthy for me. So I was very like, oh man, people, noise. Um, but just as a human being, who is curious about things in the world. And as a writer who is coming from the publishing industry, the traditional publishing industry that is very superficial, it's all about fast money, which is a lot of industries, <laughs> you know, just in general. Um, and in a space where you're not really being seen, you're just this monetary object. Um, coming here and, and feeling and finding people who allowed me to feel seen and heard. Um, I equate being seen and heard to love, you know? Um, it's an expression of love to just see you. It's an expression of love to just hear you, to just listen to you without, you know, needing anything from that. And that's very much, um, HDS has has that. Um, and so, yeah, just deep open heartedness, which in of itself is really healing while also expanding your brain <laughs> and being challenged. And I don't know, it just feels like it's such a natural part of being a human being to have those, those three things. Rajiv, uh... Maybe I'll pivot to another question and uh, try to demonstrate a bit of the concreteness of the work that we do and ask you if um, you might characterize a paper or a project that you've done in recently, either this semester or last perhaps, um, that you think was particularly interesting or really, it really felt great to you. Um, and, and would be instructive to our audience here. Yeah, um, the, there's uh, two in particular. Um, one is from uh, my, uh, in, in first semester last year, there was a course called um, Popular Hinduism, which was taught by uh, Professor Swain Bagaria. Me and him actually had the first day of class together. He was new and I was new, walking to class at the same time. Um, and I, I swear to God, I didn't plan this, but the book that I used for the papers right here next to me, because I like it so much, and I've like read this book inside and out, 
Um, it's called Cast of Mind. And my, my paper was basically premised on this, which was uh, colonial constructions of like social hierarchy in India and caste system and um, how colonialism has, you know, kind of calcified, fossilized the caste system in certain ways. Um, and then another paper that I'm working on now that I'm really interested in and have a lot of personal kind of attachment to is for this Upanishads class. So Up Upanishads are a text and a series of texts in Hinduism. And um, I'm basically looking at three schools of thought in Hinduism and how they each look at this, uh, this text from a non-dualist view, a dualist view, and a qualified dualist view for, if that means anything to anybody who's, uh, uh, you know, joining, then you, I'm sure you'll agree that that's pretty interesting work to be given the opportunity to, to do here. So yeah. And sorry, if I could toss it. So that's I, great. If I could say um, that, that go ahead. one, go ahead, one, is super, one is super like social sciences and one is super like divinity, like theological kind of work. So I, I it's a great balance. Very nice. Rob, you want to jump in with yeah, just, uh, an example here? Yeah, I do. When uh, my focus is called religion, literature, and culture. And my interest is the moral nature of stories, how people can read great literature and find moral guidance from fiction. And I mentioned to Odevis Soto when I was applying that I just have a personal fascination with Nathaniel Hawthorne. And wouldn't it be nice if I had a chance to do some research on Hawthorne? So last year, the second semester, I'm taking a course called Christian Simplicity. And I happened to mention this to my teacher because this, Hawthorne was nothing to do with the class. And she said, well, you know, Hawthorne wrote a book called The Blythdale Romance, which actually addresses these topics. Why don't you do your paper on that? So accommodating professor on a topic that she knew I was absolutely hungry to get into. And I spent, I drove out to Brook Farm. I uh, have not made it to Salem yet, but the uh, it was just a blast for me. This is something I dreamt of doing and didn't think would actually happen. And sure enough, the opportunity presented itself because of a nice professor. Terrific. Keisha, how about you? You're also in religion, literature, and culture, but with a bit of a different angle. Yeah. Um, I So one of the things that I love um, about HDS and our professors here at Harvard um, is that everyone really emphasizes that you should write about what you are interested in. So regardless of the course, where is the intersection of your interest, what you're passionate about, and, and this course? So I've had, a, like, I've actually really enjoyed several of my papers, um, and final final projects. I it might make us sound like really nerdy <laughs> because it's like, oh my God, I love my finals. Um, but um, you know, I I've done close readings on like books that you know I found really amazing. One was um, a book by Emily Towns. Um, uh, I'm getting the name of the book and my course name um, mixed up. But <laughs> um, I also did a, a creative project um, for a course last semester, Religious Dimensions, in which I took some of my writing and I teamed up as, a, with, as my um, final course partner, a, a, a student from the college. He's a senior and he's a bass player. And so what we did is we did a visual of um, some of my artwork and my writing, because I also also um, am a visual artist, to his live playing. And it was just really amazing. And we found, we found our rhythm, right, between his playing and, and the narrative. Um, and yeah, I've just, I've had a lot of fun. I've discovered new writers. I've discovered new writing. Um, and I'm, you know, contemplating um, very seriously pursuing the PhD it, it, with finding the intersection with my own interests and in work, which is really, really exciting and somewhat scary too. 
because I'm like, so eh, the, the class you were in, no doubt, is David Carrasco's uh, Religious yes. Dimensions of uh, Human Experience, which is, yes. is a wonderful class, but also a wonderful venue for the creativity of students. Um, exactly. Uh, like so many others. Uh, <laughs> Maria, how about, how about the project or paper from you that particularly sticks out? Yeah, so I'm pursuing the certificate in religion and public life also. And as an MTS, you have to take this class in your first semester, religion in the professions. So I come from a community organizing background. And in this class, you have to choose a profession um, to study throughout the semester. And of course, I chose organizing. Um, I did my final paper on the Rainbow Coalition in Chicago and the lessons that we can learn from this movement and how we can apply it to um, today's politics. And I love learning about like organizing strategies and like what can we learn from people who have done this work and have been successful. Um, and I got the opportunity to put some of these discoveries uh, from this paper in action over the summer because as a part of the certificate in public life, you have to have an internship. And I did mine over the summer in Mexico City. So I was in Mexico City working with an organization that supports running women running for office. So I was able to work with the team there and share some of the things that I've been able to learn and see um, where there could be overlap or just introduce a different angle to things, not necessarily wanting to go in and impose my view, but just introduce it as something to consider um, and where religion can show up in, in political spaces. So that was really exciting. <laughs> Great. So uh, we mentioned one of the distinctive features of the Divinity School here at Harvard is the religiously plural character of both the things you can study at the school, but also crucially of our student body. Um, and I wonder if I can uh, get a couple of you to reflect on how that cultural and religious diversity and international diversity as well uh, has has shaped your experience at HDS. Rob, you talked about this just a bit in your opening statement. So maybe I'll maybe I'll pivot to you to concretize that or elaborate on that. Sure. Well, on, just on a personal level, it's fascinating to actually listen to people from all different walks. I mean, there are Buddhist monks here and there are people of all, I'm sure, the various Protestant sects and so forth. But so far, the greatest advantage has been in my Krishna and Christ class, Rajiv was sitting behind me. And when I said, you know, I'm having trouble understanding these different Hindu texts, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, let me explain this to you. So he made it very clear quickly. So I highly recommend if you come here that Rajiv sit right behind you. Um, but it was fun. I mean, it was like he really understood exactly what I was asking. He knew he could identify exactly where I was confused. And he was right there to help. But I'm sure that it, is not an uncommon experience here. Oh, true. Keisha, how about you? Um, I, uh, I'm, I practice Buddhism and I have for like 20 years now, or maybe a little more, but I grew up like a young girl. I, we were Christian, Jehovah Witness, and then my mom remarried and we did a soft conversion to Islam. And then I converted to Buddhism on my own. So I come from this sort of pluralistic experience. And just to let you all know, everyone thinks I'm Christian or my Muslim friends, people think I'm Muslim when I talk to them. And then like my Buddhist friends, I'm like, yeah, I'm Buddhist. And they're like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what I have found is both community and a space where I can ask questions. Like I'm interested and curious about Catholicism and um, just being in a space where you have people coming from all different um, religious backgrounds, beliefs, non-beliefs. It just feels the way 
our world should be. So like, H, you know, Harvard Divinity School represents a space in which um, we're a microcosm of what the world could literally be um, and the peace and the engagement and the conversations and the dialogue that happen here um, and the making space for one another, which is a very, um, um, I just came out of class. I had a really long day. I'm like, oh my gosh, where's the word? It's it's very, um, like it's purposeful. We're making space purposefully. It's not by accident um, for one another. And, and it's really beautiful. And then I took a class which was a comparative course on Buddhism and um, Christianity, um, monkhood. And so we lived with Buddhist monks and then we lived with um, Christian monks. And that was like absolutely phenomenal. And I love the brothers and I love um, the Bontes. And yeah, like the world is your oyster to a degree here at the Div School. Maria, how about you? How has the, uh, the religious and cultural diversity of this place uh, played out for you? Yeah. So I think to begin um, coming into the divinity school, I wanted to have a space where I could question first my own faith and then explore other traditions and see if I felt called in another way. I took this class by David Carrasco, who is also Keisha and I's uh, advisor. <laughs> Um, called Machism is Mexico in my first semester and that class really exposed it really answered a lot of questions that I had about my own tradition um, moving into the rest of uh, the semester and my first year I was able to explore different classes um, Shanti Deva's Bodhicharya Vatara, which is a, a class based on a Buddhist text, and now Krishna and Christ, the comparison of Krishna and Christ, <laughs> as the title of the class uh, would suggest. Um, but aside from intentionally seeking these classes out, it's the community and the friends and the conversations that you have um, in the cafeteria, in uh, the different groups uh, that you could join. Um, I'm part of BB Snacks, the Black and Brown Snack Club. Um, I'm on the Student Association uh, board. And being able to join these different groups, you meet people with such rich perspectives that Sometimes you don't even have to, you don't even have to go out and look for it. It's just you're just surrounded by people with so much um, insight. Um, it's it's really like a beautiful experience. Thank you, Rajiv. How about you on this point? Uh, yeah, um, I mean I echo the sentiment of everybody here when it comes to the student body, but then also. Uh, if I could talk about the faculty a little bit that, um, you know, I mentioned I'm Hindu um, and, you know, part of coming to Div school is, you know, deep thought about what you believe and, you know, what values do you hold true? And uh, part of that, is, that comes with kind of some spiritual, you know, anguish. And the greatest solace that I, I found at Div school was uh, Father Clooney. Uh, Clooney. Professor Clooney's a Catholic priest, but he's also um, a Professor, he's also Maria and Rob and my prof of Krishna and Christ, um, but and he had, you know, really guided me through a difficult time in my spirituality and met me as a Hindu. Um, it also helps that he's so well versed in Hinduism. That's what he deals with here, um, and that the idea that I found that kind of solace and that peace with a Catholic priest um, to deal with my Hindu problems, it like that's like it sounds like a caricature of like what div school is like it's just that's like div school in like a story that like the hindu kid had a, a problem and with his religion and the catholic priest made him a better hindu but um but yeah so there's there's a lot of a lot to be taken away from the diversity here lovely 
So uh, maybe as we come up on the last part of the hour, um, I will ask you uh, each about what kind of looking to advice or filling in our uh, members of our uh, audience here who are thinking about applying and, and ask um, what you wish you'd known before you applied uh, and maybe advice on, uh, on the, how you approach the application. Those two questions are related to each other and, and maybe I'll toss those both uh, at the same time. Um, Rob, how about, how about you kick us off on this one? Uh, the main thing I wish I'd known is there's a pastry shop just south of campus called Mike's. Had I known that I would gain 12 pounds in my first year here, I would have stayed away from Mike's. Uh, but I did lose the 12 pounds this summer. Uh, as far as the application goes, um, I actually, I wrote an essay I thought was very good and I showed it to a fella who I'd never met before, who was a um, divinity student who had taken a sabbatical to actually do uh, some work at the uh, at Harvard Business School. And he read it and he said, well, I like the first half. I don't like the second half. Here's why. And he gave me extremely lucid feedback. I rewrote the application. Whether that's why I was accepted or not, I, obviously I can't know what the process is, but it really helped to have a reader. I mean, that's but the the peril, this is not a peril that would uh, probably hit Maria or Rajiv or Keisha. Like at my age, I'm so used to doing things my way. And it was very helpful to have someone about 40 years younger than me critique it honestly. And so I'd recommend getting a few sets of eyes to see if you're coming across the way you wish to come across. And then don't go to Mike's every day. <laughs> Great advice. Although some people might feel like maybe they should ignore that last part and go to Mike's every day instead. Um, Keisha, how about you thinking about the process? Um, I, like many people, I, I felt like very called to the program. And so it was very weird. I was very calm. Um, but then when I was applying something with my computer or my debit card got a little funky and I swear I had like a minute for my application to go through and I almost like had a hard heart attack. <laughs> so just like do it the day before, like decide you're gonna like submit it the day before. So like if you have any issues, um, you can actually do it like on a, Friday or something. So like people are still in the office. Um, aside from that, I can, I will admit, I probably haven't admit, admitted this to many people. Like I said, application went in, I'm cool, calm and collected. And then I, I get notified that I'm gonna have an interview. I stress a little bit. I'm nervous as can be during the interview um, and Odevi's, interviewed me and I then felt like I bombed the interview and then I stressed I stressed so bad between the, the interview I thought I bombed and the notification that I got in um so I would so like three days before March 15th I said calm down the decision has been made but I I would say try to do something with that stress because the truth is is once the application is in and you've done, you know, it's not in your hands anymore, right? Um, and so find things to busy yourself with, a project, a book, something, and deep breathing, yoga. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rajiv, what, ad what advice do you have in, on this regard? Um, yeah, uh, it's, Two, two things, I guess. One is uh, come pointed. Like, I mean, unless you're here for the free for all, but like it, if there's something in particular you're interested in, look at the course catalog before, even if you're ha if you're still depend deciding whether or not to apply, see what's there for you. Because I'm in Hindu studies, um, they're trying their best, um, but it works for me. Like, I like what I'm learning here. For some people, it may not be, uh, you know, with a limited uh, amount of courses. So, so uh, make sure you know what you want so that way you're also not wasting time in a short two years because two years like flies by 
So make sure you're doing, you're maximizing, optimizing your time here with courses you're interested in, which they allow you a lot of grace to kind of do. Um, the other thing is, you know, Div School is such a great place in the sense that, especially HDS, that it allows this balance between the practitioner side of you and like the academic side of you. Um, but then sometimes those things can be at odds. So stay grounded, you know, make sure you have a support system either within yourself or around you that when those things kind of give you a hard time, um, you know who and where to lean into, especially when it comes to your faith, because um, you know that can come crumbling down in a lot of ways. But also, like I said, you can lean into any number of people here as well, especially Clooney. Um, I, will, I will sing Clooney's praises to the end of time, but yeah. <laughs> And Maria, what do you wish you had known before you applied? Yeah, I think go ahead and apply. Like there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, I will say that I was not supported um, like by the, my, by the people around me to pursue mm -hmm. a master's in theological studies of uh, people would tell me that I didn't need to, or they would give me all these reasons for why a master's in theological studies shouldn't be my next step. But if this is a calling that you feel, and I really felt a calling to this program, even if the people around you may not agree with you, trust that instinct because this place is amazing there's support, like you will be supported um, by the people that you meet here. And if I could look back to my application, I think something that really helped me was just being flat out authentic and transparent about my discernment in choosing Divinity School. This is really, I laid out why I came to this decision that this would be my next step. Um, and just be honest, just be honest, um, because it's valid and just trust the weight of your discernment process is enough to get you here because it is. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Excellent advice from all of you. We, uh, as members of the faculty on the admissions committee and certainly as the staff are always looking to find uh, the authentic uh, selves of the students who are going to become our students like all of you are and to really make this place the community of engagement and learning and practice that it is. We have students, uh, many students who are looking to go on in academic fields alone, students who have many different paths uh, through various forms of practice, and students who are just trying to figure out which path they should take, but who know how to go. They're all uh, really crucial parts of our, of our classrooms, of our community more broadly. Um, and uh, I think everyone participating, viewing this webinar will see uh, quite clearly through the four of you what a wonderful uh, what a wonderful group of students we managed to attract. So it's been my pleasure to, to have all of you join me today. It's been, I think, really productive, I hope, for the, for the prospective students uh, with us. And Davies. at this point, I'll, I'll pass back to you. Thank you, Professor Lambert. We have about five more minutes. If if there are any questions that our, our attendees have in mind, this is a good time to uh, to send them in via the chat. And of course, if nothing comes to mind right now, that's perfectly fine. You're you're more than welcome to to send those questions afterward, and we can connect you with uh, maybe not these students directly, or maybe they'll be able to answer some of the questions. But with other students, they can also share their experience. So. Um, Again, just opening it up to to any of you who might have any questions. We'll wait for about thirty more seconds. See, I I just want to also just take the opportunity again to to thank Professor Lambert and and our panelists for 
for for giving this prospective students a, a snippet into the the process through which you decided to to go through as you applied, um, but also what it's been like for you the last year and, and change. It's it's wonderful. Um, Ooh, someone asked a question that if you don't mind, I want to. I've been wanting to say this anyway. Yeah, uh, Rob, go I, ahead, take it. If you get accepted here and if you come here, I highly recommend that you involve yourself in Harvard University along with Harvard Divinity School. You might find that Steven Pinker is giving a lecture tonight or former president at the law school or who knows. I mean, this is obviously an astonishing place. So there's a lot going on around here. And uh, I highly recommend diving in. Wonderful, yeah. absolutely. I, I so one this. of the questions. Oh, One of the questions ahead. we did get was uh, in the chat was a question about what some of the highlights of the social life at HDS are outside of the classroom. So I wonder if one of you wants to wants to field that, uh, Keisha. Um, I would just follow up. I thought Rob was answering that question because there is so much going on um, at Harvard that there are not enough years and millennia and days to get to everything. So you will find between like classes, um, student groups and organizations and events um, and talks, many who are catered. Um, <laughs> at <laughs> HDS, we have Tuesday tea that's catered. Um, there's so much going on at HDS and the other 12 schools that there is never a moment that it could not be filled. Would anyone else like jump in and sort of like second, third, fourth that? Third that. <laughs> there's so many clubs to be involved, uh, to get involved in. And if there's a club that you're curious about, you just go to the meeting. Like everybody's just very accepting and even, um, if there's a tradition that you may not, um, you don't really know much about, um, you'd be surprised like these welcoming spaces um, to just join uh, like a club. Yeah, there's so much, there's so much to do. Um, it's a lot of fun, but also I will say that it's okay to like take some time for yourself because sometimes it can be a bit much and overwhelming so just take it take it event by event day by day um because it's amazing <laughs> we have time for one more one last question so i think maybe the question uh that might be helpful is for one of you to to take the question of why you chose the MTS program over the MDiv program. I should note in advance of this, we uh, it, it, this is a, an important thing for your application, um, but you should also be aware that we have a fairly robust traffic between the two programs um, during, usually during the end of the first year uh, when students come and, and realize that no, they actually wish they, uh, could have the experience of the other program, but I'm but I'm curious if uh, if one of you might speak to how it was that you made that choice yourself. Um, I'll jump in real quick. Uh, for me, the MTS just seemed. I wasn't sure if I needed if I wanted two years versus three years. The MDiv does have a focus on um, like preaching. You know, you don't necessarily have to want to be ordained at the end of your three years, but I, my focus wasn't as much around that, especially as somebody who practices Buddhism, like you don't become ordained within Buddhism um, to become a Buddhist teacher, you go through training. And again, as a, as a literary person, as a writer, who also is thinking about the PhD. I, I just didn't see how the MDiv was necessarily what I need, like vitally needed, if that makes sense. Um, okay, I'll jump out. 
Terrific. Thank you, uh, Keisha, and, and thank, thank you all of you um, for this really um, illuminating discussion. Again, thank, thank you so much, Maria, Rob, Rajiv, Keisha. Good to see the four of you. And of course, yes. thank you, Professor David Lambert, for, for your time and, 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 and shepherding these questions over here. And uh, prospective students, thank you for sharing some of your time with us. Um, please reach out if you have any follow-up questions. We have a lot of uh, upcoming virtual events as well. We're also on the road. So if you happen to see us visiting anywhere nearby, please uh, join us. And we also have a virtual open house uh, in just under a month's time. So that might be a good opportunity to also meet with more students, hear from faculty, uh, meet staff. So lots of opportunities available to you. Um, thank you again. Be well. And, and we look forward to possibly reviewing your application. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.